Welcome to this short training video on how to create multiple journal entries in NetSuite via CSV import. This video is presented to you by Business Solution Partners. Today I'll show you how to create the journal entry import template, how to map the CSV import template to NetSuite. I'll show you how to view the CSV import status and how to resolve import errors. And finally, I'll show you how to review journal entries posted via the CSV import. First, I want to show you the CSV template I created for my journal entry upload. My first column has the external ID number. This information is important if I want to separate these six lines into multiple journal entries. If I don't have this column, all six lines will be one single journal entry number. Right now, the first two items are going to be one journal entry. The next set is going to be a separate journal entry because they have the same external ID number. And the last two lines will be one journal entry where I'm debiting account 6104 and crediting 2005. The next column is my account number, which I need. It's a required field. And I have my debit, my credit, and the memo that I want for this transaction. There are other columns you can add here. You can add classes. You can add currency. You can even add a subsidiary here. So you will see that I'm going to select it during the import because I'm doing this upload for one single subsidiary. Now, for my import today, I'm using my administrator role in NetSuite. However, the right to import CSV records is available within other roles and can be added to a customized role as well. To begin my import, I will go to Setup, Import, Export, and then I'm going to select Import CSV Records. And this will bring me to the Import Assistant window. We can skip over this message by just clicking outside of it. And the import type for journal entries is transactions. So I'll go down and look for transactions. You can see that you have other options here, customization, um, employees, items. The transactions is right here. And then the options for record type within the transactions category there are multiple, but I'm going to use the journal entry record type, which is here. My character encoding is pre-filled. My CSV type um, is already pre-filled as comma delimiter. And then I just have to find my file, which is the same one that we were just looking at before when I show you my CSV import template. So I'm going to find that file by clicking on select. And from there, you go to the, the folder where you have saved that template. Once I select my template, you can see the name of it here. You go to next. And then you have a few options. You are adding, either adding a record or updating a record, or you can let the system either add or update. This is going to be driven by the, that external ID number that I added to my template. If I don't have that, the system will know that a record already existed. That external ID is unique for each transaction. So if I try to upload that template again a second time, it will tell me that the external ID record already exists. If I have a new column in that template, or if I make changes to any of the fields, I can ask the system to update it, and it's going to update the existing external ID. So for this time, I'm going to add, and then you move on to next. And this is where we do the mapping of the CSV template to the fields in NetSuite. Since I use 
some of the, the headers on my file are exactly the same as the ones in Netsuite. The system is assigning some tree mapping, but this is not always the case. And if you wanted to map it, you could do it at this point, and I'll show you how. So the external ID is being mapped to external ID in NetSuite, which you can find over here. It's already, if it's grayed out, it means that it was already mapped. The memo is, is assigning to memo. So this column on the right here is the NetSuite field. This column on the left is the CSV. So if you see it, the third item here is the subsidiary, which says that it's a required field. I don't have a subsidiary in my template, if you remember. So I can actually, because I'm uploading this for one single subsidiary, I can click on the edit button here and select my subsidiary at this point. However, you can have the subsidiaries as a column in the CSV template and it will be mapped as one of, just as one of these fields. The date is being pre-filled as June 28th, but you can also edit this and you can also have that date as a column in your CSV template. The account has been mapped, the credit, and the debit. But let's say that one of these fields wasn't mapped. I will remove memo for a second. So let's say nothing was here for memo, and I wanted to map my memo from the CSV to the memo in the journal and in NetSuite. The first thing I'll do is select memo from the NetSuite field. And then once the right column is filled in with the memo, I click on this arrows and then click on the memo field from my CSV over here. And now you can see that the mapping has been done. So every field is mapped. I have dates and I have subsidiaries, which will be required. And now I'm going to say next. On this screen, the system wants you to give your import a name. And I'm going to call this journal entry 62870. And at this point, I can save and run my CSV import. This takes us to the screen where you can click on import job status and see what's the status of your import. So let's click there, import job status. And based on the time, it, I believe this is my import, the latest one, and it says that three out of three records were successfully imported. But let's say this is not the case, and you have something like this where it says that zero of one record imported successfully. If you want to see that, you can click on CSV response. And the system is going to show you the reason why your import didn't process. So I'm going to click there for a second. And this is going to download a, an Excel file with the information. And I'm going to copy that over into the other file so you can see what the error message was. I'm just bringing over the error message that I got. And the system says, please enter a valid value for account, which means that the account number that I had was either not open for that subsidiary, it wasn't formatted correctly, and at that point, all you have to do is go to your CSV, look at what you used for the account, check in that suite, just make sure the account is open, and make any changes that you need to in the, in the CSV file. I'll go back to NetSuite now. So in this case, our latest import has processed us successfully. So all I have to do now is review my account to make sure that my journal entries are actually posted. It should be. The system, if the system says that it's posted, it is. But I always like to double check. So I'm going to review my entries by going into the income statement. But there are other ways you can do this. You can do a search for the journal entries that you posted recently or you can go to the account, the chart of accounts, and run the history for that account. You can run a transaction detail report by account. You can do a lot of different things. The quickest way for me is usually to run 
an income statement and look at the account where I expect the entries to be posted. So this is my income statement for the subsidiary that I used. It's for June. And I remember that the account that I was using for my journal entries were advertising and insurance expense. So these are my entries. If you remember from the upload template, I had 12,000 for one line, 13,000 for another, and 14,000 for another. I can quickly go back to the CSV template so you can see them. So these were my entries. 12,000 for account 60110, 13,000 for 6102, and 14,000 for 6104. And here are my accounts with the amount that I just processed. In this case, my entries are the only balances in these accounts. However, that might not always be the case. So you can always click in the accounts that you just posted the transactions in and find your entries there. So my entry for 12,000 into account 6010 is number 491. We hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions about any of the features described in the video, or need training or support with NetSuite managers or transactions, please contact Business Solution Partners at the email or phone number on the screen. Business Solution Partners is a NetSuite partner and a management and consulting firm specializing in cloud-based system implementations. Their staff members and management team include CPAs and certified solution developers with over 25 years of experience in accounting and system implementation. Visit us at bsbny.com or follow us on Twitter and other social media.